Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Sabetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro. And on today's show, we have a special guest, Katherine Breed, marathon swimmer from the Bay Area, California. What's going on? Hi, I'm good. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a lot that we want to talk about here today, so let's get right into it. Maybe give us a little bit of background on your swimming, like how you got into the sport and, and how you got to where you are today. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I grew up as a water baby. Like I, my mom told me I jumped off the diving board at 18 months and at four years old, I was doing club swimming. So I, water's always been a part of my life um, and I grew up sailing in the Bay Area. So I did year round swimming like most, most collegiate swimmers and then uh, got accepted to UC Berkeley. So swam there for four years and had a pretty successful pool career. And once I graduated from pool swimming, I just wasn't ready to hang up my bathing suit, um, but I didn't want to race in the pool. So my friends introduced me to open water swimming in San Francisco and I joined the Dolphin Club um, and pretty quickly got not peer pressured, but definitely like strongly pushed into doing marathon swimming. Um, my first one being Lake Tahoe. And I just fell in love with the sport. I mean, the ocean is like my second home and then you've got the swimming aspect. So yeah, I mean, I've been swimming my whole life. I just keep swimming further and further. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome. So you, you condensed a couple of decades of of stories into like 30 seconds a minute. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to unpackage that a little bit. Uh, yeah. So tell me the ocean and being in the water. I, I understand you were sailing too. So I guess, how did that all contribute to, you know, the love of the water? I think for me, I mean, we sailed, we had our boat in French Polynesia and we, for like two years, we got it in New Zealand. We had it in Baja for a while. So for me, the ocean was always like associated with vacation. So we'd be there for whole summers or Christmas. So it was my sister and I would play and our playtime was in the ocean. You know, it was looking at all the little sea animals or trying to like find little reef sharks or so that was like my experience with the ocean was it being a very comforting place um and yeah I mean and then I think that just translates into swimming at Cal Terry really wanted us to have a relationship with the water um and be the little girl that wanted to race for the blue ribbon so I think the marriage of my relationship with the water before college and then the way Terry helped it to grow um, kind of led me to where I am today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you mentioned Terry, Terry McKeever, head uh, coach at Berkeley and uh, Olympic coach, I believe as well. So what was it like being in that environment, arguably one of the best programs in the world? So what was that like? It was hard. I, I loved it though. Um, I mean, I came in as probably one of the top recruits in the nation. Um, my career didn't finish exactly where I wanted to in the pool, but I, Terry's thing was she wanted us to be strong women uh, before we were swimmers. So leaving that program, no matter what you accomplish in the pool, you're leaving with the experience of swimming for Cal, a degree from Cal, and you, she taught us how to be strong women, how to be leaders, how to speak in public. And I'm so grateful for those experiences because I think those carry so much farther in life than just how fast did you go. Um, but the training was fun. I mean, I'm still best friends with some of the girls on the team. So it, it was great. I mean, I wouldn't change it for anything. Mm -hmm. And I guess what, what events did you do and how does that translate? Because marathon, a lot of people don't know what that is. Maybe break down what marathon swimming is and what yeah. you did in the pool. Yeah, so what I did in the pool, I was a 200 freestyler and I had 200, 400 or 200, 500. And then I, in high school, like tried to go down to the 100, but I'm just, I'm not a sprinter. <laughs> Shocking, right? <laughs> um, and in college, I went up to the thousand in the mile. So those were kind of my events. Um, I, the reason I didn't stick so much with the 200 is because you had people like Liz Pelton and Missy Franklin and Caroline Peel and Camille Chang, like they were just monsters at the 200 free. So I needed to help the team in other ways. Um, the mile was not my favorite event. I, yeah, I mean, I, 
I didn't like the long distance stuff, but now in marathon, so I guess marathon swimming, I think people would probably qualify as anything over a 10K or a t up to a 10K maybe. Um, ultra marathon is anything over that. So you could call it like channel swimming. Um, you know, it's the people doing the English channel or Catalina or whatever else. Um, so yeah, I mean, in mileage, anything from six miles on is ultra marathon swimming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you've, and you've done some of those. So maybe uh, tell us what some of the, the most interesting ones that you've done. I know you have a bunch of accolades. So walk us through the first one you did and then what you did after that. Yeah, I was actually just talking about the first one I did this morning. It was uh, Lake Tahoe. And I have a friend doing it this weekend. And my other friends I swam with this morning were like, are you worried about your record being broken? And I'm like, no, because I was in such good shape for that race. Like, so my, my first marathon swim was, um, Lake Tahoe, South shore to North shore, 21 miles. And I did it in under nine hours. So I broke the overall record by a little under 30 minutes, I think. And it was, um, I was training out of a place of fear. Like I was so afraid I wasn't going to finish the swim. So I would swim open water in the morning, go to work, We'd do CrossFit at work at lunch. And then after work, I'd go do like 7,000 yards in the pool, descend one through three, descend one through four. Just crazy work by myself. Um, I'm not in that kind of shape right now because I'm not really doing out of a place of fear. I'm swimming them more because I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was my first experience and it was perfect. I mean, I negative split it and got a record and it was great conditions. Um... And then I think the most interesting one, probably most recently, I did the North Channel. So that was Ireland to Scotland. Um, and that one took me 11 hours. And it was just like, it was monster. There were, it was 52 degrees. We counted over 100 jellyfish. Um, and there were, it was windy and cold. Yeah, it was just, it was rough. Um, but yeah. I, I want to break apart the first one you mentioned. So the Lake yeah. Tahoe, so 20 plus miles, you, you, so you break the record by 30 minutes, but you're still swimming for like eight and a half hours, basically nine hours. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, so most people are not, if they were going to do that, they probably wouldn't go as fast as you. They take even longer. So how do you yeah. go from, like, what was the longest you did before nine hours of swimming? I think, like that? I think five hours. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was the training? So you mentioned, you know, morning, you're doing like doubles or triples. So what was the average uh, volume or time spent per week leading into that nine hour swim? So, gosh, that was a while ago. Um, I think for that one, it was, I was doing a lot of CrossFit. So it was CrossFit three times a week. And then I was swimming probably 20 to 30,000 yards a week. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was in the pool because I had access to a pool right next to my office on my way home. So it was like really easy for me to get in a pool right now. I cannot get in a mm -hmm. pool that easily. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of that. And then the weekends were maybe three to five hour training sessions in the Bay. Um, and a little bit of running here and there, but it was pretty much just swimming, just CrossFit. Mm -hmm. Tell us, I want to go into the Bay Area swimming. So I know Dolphin Club is, is a big thing. So maybe tell us about what the, what are the conditions of the Bay? Like what is this, you know, your pond, like people who aren't global audience, they're not familiar with the Bay Area. What is the Bay like? Oh gosh. So the San Francisco Bay is this like very long oval shape. Um, and most swimmers will get in at a place called Aquatic Park, which is right by Fisherman's Wharf. Um, I think a lot of people know Fisherman's Wharf, and you can see the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz right from where we swim. Um, in Aquatic Park, it's this nice little circle, and people will swim in there, and the water's pretty calm generally, uh, but once you get out of the cove, it can be really bumpy. I mean, you're swimming through white caps, you're swimming through really strong currents. Um, I think it is probably one of the best places in the world to open water swim. Um, cause you get it all, you get the wind, the waves, the currents. Um, it's cold. 
but you also have an amazing community. So I think that's my favorite part about marathon swimming in the Bay and open water swimming is anywhere you get in, you're going to find other people swimming there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's so cool going out there in the morning and you're watching the sunrise over the Bay bridge and the golden gate bridge is to your left. Like you really can't beat that view. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, let's get back to the, these channel swims. So which is the most difficult uh, open water that you've done so far? The North Channel, <laughs> hands yep. down, the North Channel, yeah. And, um, and what specifically do you think made that one more difficult than others? Um, I think there was some mental part of it. Like marathon swimming, marathon anything, you get to a point where your body can do it but your mind has to be tough enough and you'll get to a breaking point and I think that's why those marathon activities get really scary to people is it's hard to be with yourself or to be in your head for eight to 20 hours you know however long it's going to take you um so I went into the north channel having trained very hard and was really going for the record for that one um and the morning we got in we knew the wind was going to be bad, but we thought it was going to get better and it just never got any better. So there was a point where it was like just so defeating that I had flown all the way over to there with these expectations um, that I had set and mother nature wasn't going to give it to me that day. So, you know, swimming through crosswind of over 10 to 12 knots of wind, which creates white caps hitting your face for that many hours while trying to avoid getting stung by lion's mane jellyfish while knowing that you're not going to break this record that you think you were going to is really tough. Um, but you know, it's good because marathon swimming, it's like, I don't get to pick the day. It's not a controlled environment. And that's kind of the beauty of the sport too. Um, yeah. So North channel, hands down, hardest channel I've ever done. <laughs> and so a lot of people, they don't even know that some of these channels even exist as a way to, that you can something that you can swim around them like you know I was telling someone yeah there's a swim you can go around Manhattan Island and you can actually like swim and yeah. people are like you can do that and yeah so maybe what are some swims that you've done that are people they might not be on people's radar that you've that you've been able to accomplish um so I haven't done well I will say Manhattan 10 out of 10 recommend that swim. Like, I think anyone that wants to try a marathon swim should do that one. It's really well organized. The water's warm and you're going with the current the whole time. So there was points in it where I was going faster than the traffic, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is awesome because you're like, I'm beating you. So it was, that was a great event. Um, yeah, you can swim around Manhattan. I think most people don't know about the ocean seven. So everyone knows like the English channel and they'll be like, have you done the English channel? And I'm like, yeah, but for me, I'm like, <laughs> I the English channel. okay. Before we talk about the ocean seven, you can but I'm like, ask me about the North channel. Like that. I think that one's cooler. You know, people okay. don't know you can swim Tahoe or in mm -hmm. Hawaii. I mean, look anywhere on a map. That's got like a, 20 to 30, 40, 50 miles. And if you want to swim it, you can swim it. You just have to plan it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, let's talk about the ocean seven, but first the English channel, because I know that one's probably one of the most, you know, headliney. You know, people are really interested in, in what makes that so difficult. Uh, and you mentioned it's not even the hardest one. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, I think, you know, I think it's kind of like Everest and K2. Mm -hmm. So people look at Everest and Everest is the, the media, you know, everyone focuses on Everest. And it's like, oh my gosh, you're going to climb Everest. But when you look at it, it's like, you've got teams that are basically going to carry you and your stuff up the mountain. Um, but it's Everest. And then you look at its neighbor K2 and like, that's a very different situation. Um, but people don't know that much about it. So I think English channel has that, like that big name and it's like, it's the Everest of marathon swimming. So I think what makes it tough um, I mean, it just the distance, you don't really face a lot of the other conditions, like the water's cold, um, but 60 is manageable. Um, you don't have sharks, you don't have jellyfish that are too bad. So it's the distance, you know, the distance of any of these make it really hard. Um, but I think it's great that it has the notoriety it does because then it opens the door for other conversations or for people to set other goals for themselves. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So tell us about the, the Ocean 7 now. 
Mm -hmm. So the Ocean 7 is the equivalent of the Seven Summits, um, which is climbing, I think, the tallest peak on every continent. Um, so the Ocean 7 is made up of seven of the quote-unquote toughest or maybe well-known channels. Um, so you've got English Channel, the North Channel, and then you've got the Strait of Gibraltar, um, Catalina, um, Cook Strait in New Zealand, and then Suguru in Japan. So those are, that's six. Um, what's the other one? Oh my gosh. Um, I'm blanking. Well, it's cool. We'll come back to that. So the, of the ones you mentioned, it sounds like you've done maybe some of the most difficult ones already. Yeah, I've done two. Uh, and then I'm going to do Catalina in October. Mm -hmm. So and I'll have three before. Yeah, I guess what keeps you motivated now that you've, you've sort of started at the hardest, the longest ones, <laughs> and then you've kind of working your way backwards. Normally people kind of build up to it. So what keeps you motivated at this point to keep doing these? Well, now I've done the hardest one, so I have to do it. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> no, I mean, what keeps me motivated is I, I always said I wouldn't do the Ocean 7 because I don't want to do the North Channel. It was so intimidating to me to think about when I started the sport. And then now that I've done it, it's like, all right, well, I just need to start checking the box on the other ones and just take it one year at a time. Mm -hmm. And for, for swimmers who are listening and they're not as familiar with like open water swimming in general, or these, you know, more distance uh, focused ones like ultra, what do you think are the biggest differences when someone goes from uh, pool swimming to open water and then even from open water to ultra distance? The biggest differences? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they're, to me, they're all like different sports. Um, you know, pool swimming, you're going in a controlled environment and you get a race and you get to see how fast you can go. And I, I love that. Like, it's fun to see where your 200 is or your 100 free. Um, and then you get into open water swimming, which I think a lot of master swimmers use as like a, a challenge goal. You're, you know, it's like, I can swim in the pool. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. I'm been out of college. I'm now 30, 40, 50 years old. I want to challenge myself. So you look at open water swimming and then you do your first 2k open water race. And it's like, wait, that was kind of fun. Um, I liked the, it's kind of a little frantic and you're not in a controlled environment and you're racing people that are literally swimming on top of you. Um, and you know, you either hate it and never do it again, or you love it. And then your next challenge is, oh, I want to see if I can do a 10K. And then all of a sudden you find yourself racing a 10K. And then, you know, the next challenge would be to do a channel swim, I think, and, or doing one of those marathon, dis ultra marathon distances. Um, so I think it's a fun progression. I mean, it's limitless with swimming. You can do anything you want. Um, so it's just cool to see that progression. And I've seen a lot of swimmers take it up. Um, and it, I, I think it's exciting for the sport. That's awesome. And yeah. tell us about like technique differences and maybe let's get into the specifics here. Cause a lot of swimmers, they think, well, water swimming, swimming is swimming. Right. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of differences. What are, what do you think some of the biggest differences are? Temperature. <laughs> I mean, <Yeah. laughs> temperature and salinity. So you're going from warm, fresh water, um, to salt water. So you're going to be a little bit more buoyant, but you're also going to be a little colder. Um, and just being able to breathe in the waves. So I think like I have a pool stroke that's going to be every single stroke is going to look the same throughout practice. And then I'll have my stroke for open water swimming, which is going to change a little bit as I go on. Um, and, you know, I try to make it match what the water is giving me and the waves are giving me. So I think your technique changes a little bit, um, but the, the key factors need to stay there, right? Like you need to rotate from your core. You need to have a long stroke. You're stretching out and gliding. You need to think about your breathing position as so you're not lifting your head. Um, and then you've got sighting in open water swimming too. I don't do a lot of sighting because I'll usually have a kayaker right next to me. Um, but you know, you have to find a way to integrate sighting into your stroke that's not going to impact your stroke negatively or start giving you shoulder or neck pain. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I know another thing that's important, especially in ultra is like nutrition and making sure you're able to go nine hours. So some people think, well, how can you do anything for 
10 hours or five hours even. Like, how does that work? Well, so people say that, but I'm like, think about an Ironman. I mean, those events take eight plus hours to do. The best people are doing it in eight hours. Right. Um, so nutrition for me, I start at one hour and then after the hour, every 30 minutes, I'll have something that's about 100 to 150 calories and water. Um, and someone will throw it to me off of the boat and I'll just, it's always a squeeze packet. So I'll have a squeeze packet, drink my water and keep going. Um, so it's actually, it's pretty simple when you think about it. Um, but yeah, nutrition's really important for the long swims. What's, okay, so what's your favorite, like, before, during, and after? So before, I always have, um, I call it savory oatmeal. It's oatmeal with two sunny side eggs. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then during my favorite, I mean, I do honey stinger gels. I swear by them. I just, I, they work really well for me. Um, so I love the honey stinger gels. And then after, oh, man, I mean like any like peanut butter, almond butter type thing. Um, I have nudie like recovery peanut butters. I like to have in my bag after a long like training swim, but mm -hmm. after a channel or a yeah. six hour swim, like a breakfast burrito. Oh my gosh. Like if I could have a good breakfast burrito, <laughs> just one after the English channel, I actually wanted fish and chips. So we went to a place, um, when we got back to England side and I was like, I want two large fish and chips. And this woman's like, you want two small ones, right? I was like, no, too large. And she's like, they're like this big. And I'm like, I know. I <laughs> want two large ones, <laughs> please, for myself. And she's like, okay. Because <laughs> uh, I mean, people don't realize it, but when you're doing physical work, whether it's swimming or anything else for that long, like your body is getting beaten down and it, to re you're not going to be able to do this every day unless you're actually taking care of your body. Um, I guess what, besides nutrition and eating properly, what do you think are some other elements from like a holistic perspective that are important? Strength. I think cross training is so important. Um, and I don't see it a lot in ultra marathon swimming. Um, mm -hmm. I see people go training for ultra marathon swims going in and just swimming. And I think that's super important, but if you haven't built up the strength around your shoulders, your scapula, your lats, if your hip flexors aren't strong, like you're going to break down and something's going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. So I do um, strength training. I actually do a lot of trail running. I think trail running, cycling, like going uphill and building the leg strength and core strength is important. Mm -hmm. Um, and then yoga. I mean, I, I do like recovery yoga when I, when I can get it in. Um, so I, I think it's all, I mean, you get to a level where you set goals for yourself and you have to train like an athlete. Um, you know, if you're going to set a crazy goal, you need, you need to prepare and train and do all of the pieces. You can't just say, Oh, I'm just going to swim. So I'm going to make the English channel. Like, no, you need to sleep and eat healthy and prepare and all of the, there's so many um, different aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, great feedback and advice for all the swimmers out there looking to get into that, that and get onto your level. Um, in your career, I guess, so far, who, who have been some of the people or groups that have inspired you to keep doing what you're doing and, and reach further? Yeah. I mean, my, like all my coaches, I've had like Terry McKeever, Steve Morsilli, um, with the Seahawks and then Marsha Benjamin with, um, Memo. She's a coach for the, an Oakland, California master swim team. Like they just never once were they like, this is crazy what you're doing. It was always like supportive or like excited about it. Um, so I've had just great coaching. Um, and then my community, I mean, like I said, I swim at the Mecca of open water swimming. So everywhere I turn is someone who's either, going to be training or is training for one of these swims or has already done all seven of them. Um, so I'm around people who, whether they're swimming it or they're a kayaker, like the kayakers and the pilots are just as excited about these as the swimmers are. And they're not the ones who are like accomplishing the goal. The team. Uh, right. It's a team. So it's like, I have, I live somewhere where I've got this team of like, a hundred plus people who are all there to support me in whatever way I need. I mean, I've got a strength coach at the Olympic club and 
um, right. We haven't been able to work together for a while, but like, he's just so supportive of me. Um, and we work together to create workouts that match. And so it's nice to have that. Yeah. That's awesome. For a lot of swimmers, they might not have the opportunity to have like an in-person team. They rely on a digital team, I guess. And now with the pools being closed in a lot of places, a lot of people have moved to open water. And I know like yeah. at my swim pro in our community, people are always messaging us like, well, what wetsuit do I get? How do I open water swim? Like, how far should I go? What do I do? Um, and so there's a lot of uncertainty and confusion. I guess, what advice do you have for someone who's just basically trying to get into open water swimming, but they're a little nervous because they haven't done it maybe? I think the, I mean, I think one, like, well, I will say what I love about my swim pro is people can go on there and yeah, you don't have a weight coach or you don't have your master swim coach, but you can create this workout for yourself or find one that's already been created. And then just in your head, like, this is my coach for the day and just let that hold you accountable. So I think that's really nice to have. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice is find a friend to do it with you. I mean, things are a lot less scary if you've got someone going, doing it next to you. Um, so, and then that's my second piece of advice is don't be afraid. Like just go in there, breathe and enjoy the water. Um, you know, there's really not a lot that's going to hurt you in open water swimming. So just enjoy being in nature, enjoy the scenery, um, try to like get your mind in the right place. Um, you know, once, once those things are good, then you can start talking about like your technique and your racing and times and all of this, but you've got to get the fundamentals down of just enjoying the sport and finding people to enjoy it with. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then the next layer of advice is for those who are already open water swimming and they're they, like, I, I'll put myself into this bucket where you've done some open water swims, nothing over maybe an hour or so, but you're thinking about what if I were to do they hear you swimming for nine hours and they're like, well, maybe that's that maybe at some day I'd like to do that. Or I'd like to do one of these channel swims or the seven. What, what advice do you have for people who are thinking about going to the next level? Yeah. So I'd say first do a 10 K. Um, if you can do a 10 K swim, I think that's any, and you enjoy it. Um, do a 10 K, enjoy it, swim it well, that opens the door uh, for you. And then set your sights on something that's like 12 to 15 miles and maybe in your backyard. I mean, I chose Tahoe because Tahoe's three hours away from me. I drive up there almost every weekend in the winter. So Tahoe to me was comfortable and it was a good first step before flying over to England to try the English channel. So do one that's in your backyard that you're comfortable with, get a good crew, and then just sign up for it. I mean, just sign up for it. Don't talk about it. Just mm -hmm. sign up for it, commit to do it. And then the worst thing that happens is you don't finish. And that is not a bad thing at all. Um, I mean, if that's your, if that's the worst thing that could happen, you really can't fail. So go, I just, I say, go for it. <laughs> awesome. Just go for it. Do it. Sign up. I like it. So I guess I should sign up for one of these. Yeah, uh, you should. <laughs> cool. Um, tell us about, so on social media, we'll put all of your handles in the description that where they can follow you, but tell us about like, uh, behind, beyond the black line. What does yeah. that mean? To you? Oh my, I don't even know where I really came up with that. Um, for me, it's, it's twofold. I mean, you've got the like very literal translation of going beyond the black line of the pool. You know, you're looking at this black line. It's telling you when to turn, where, when you're going to finish. Are you staying in the middle of the pool and you're in this concrete square? So yeah. it's going beyond that. It's exposing yourself to open water, to what else is out there. Um, I'm actually like a big trail runner and skier. Um, and I do all these other sports. So for me, it's like going beyond just the pool. And then the more like metaphorical or figurative is going beyond like the confines of your own mind, I guess, you know, we all have that black line where we kind of say like, this is where I'm going to stay. This is my lane. And it's like, just, just go beyond that, break through that, see what you can do. I mean, like I said, you want to try one of these big swims, just, just go for it. Um, and I don't know. It's about just seeing how far you can push yourself. Cause I think humans can do really, really incredible things. I think we just get scared sometimes. Um, so I don't know, that's kind of like where it, what it means to me. Um, I'm sure to other people it means different things, but yeah. I love it. No, that's amazing. I think on both, both fronts, the literal sense, I think that's one thing that a lot of people, they see others like yourself and they, they travel and they can go, you know, beyond the black line literally, and they can go experience new things. 
But then the way you describe it figuratively, just not putting a limit on yourself and being able to, you know, push beyond what you think your limits are because there are no limits. It's, yeah. it's whatever you decide to do. Awesome. Well, uh, Kat, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us on the Ask a Swim Pro show. Uh, we love everything that you're doing. Keep inspiring everyone to push beyond the black line and we'll catch you later. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later.